Welcome to the Bio Balance Healthcast, episode number 497. Hypothyroidism is the overlooked diagnosis. Bio Balance Health features conversations about anti aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moppin, Medical Director of Bio Balance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moppin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moppin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. We're going to talk about the 10 signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism and why it's important. Mm -hmm. It is probably the second most important hormone replacement, that you, well, third, after, after testosterone and estrogen, mm -hmm. that you monitor so closely. And I want you to talk to us about the reasons why. So you, okay. have, you have a story to tell. It's a real story right, about a, a real Yeah, person. a real story about one of my patients that made, that really motivated me and, and inspired me to do this talk and this uh, pod or health cast. So one of my patients, who has been a patient for 10 years, was happy. She was feeling good. Everything was wonderful. And then she went to a new p primary care doctor, and he confused her about what her problem was. She had... Um, she had some hair loss, but here's the, here's the situation. I'll set the stage. She comes to us for estrogen and testosterone, but she insisted on seeing her primary care for thyroid, mm -hmm. and she was always replaced at too low a dose. So one of the big side effects of low thyroid is hair loss. Okay. It's the hair loss that's all over your head, not hair loss here, hair loss here, not hair loss just in the front. It's hair loss all over your head. So, and it's also breaking hair, brittle hair. Okay. And uh, your hair comes out kind of looking like baby hair, but it doesn't, it doesn't grow very long. So she clearly had that, and we had seen it, and we told her that we'd like to take care of her thyroid because we didn't think she was on enough, and she didn't come to us for that. She went to her primary care. So when she goes to him about hair loss and linking it to thyroid, he lists, he says, that's your too much testosterone, and he blamed the testosterone. But there's, there, it's important to know what the symptoms of low thyroid are, because a lot of people say, well, that's your testosterone, or that's your cortisol, or that's adrenal fatigue, when it's just thyroid, and you can do something about it. So you have always maintained, as long as I've known you, and we've, we've talked about these topics, that Thyroid is one of the old school symptom recognition trainings that mm -hmm. doctors had. I mean, you check mm -hmm. their fingernails, you check their body temperature, you ask them about fatigue, you go through the list of symptoms, mm -hmm. and they, from what they say to you, you pretty much know what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. You also now have the more modern blood tests that mm -hmm. will tell you exactly what their LSH and FSH components are. They're, they're TSH. TSH. <laughs> Uh, That's why I'm the doctor. Exactly. <laughs> I play alphabet soup on a regular basis. But so you use a combination, and, and people can do that as well. When, when you go through this list of symptoms and you ask yourself, do I have these mm -hmm. things? And both of our books list the symptoms of low testosterone. Mm -hmm. So you can compare this list with the list that's in our book, The Secret Female Hormone mm -hmm. or Got Testosterone, and see if it skews in the direction of thyroid. Right. And, Some and of them are, are common, like fatigue yeah. can be from low testosterone or low thyroid or both. Right. So some overlap. But when but when I was talking to this patient and uh -huh. trying to calm her down, right. um, this doctor wasn't talking about those symptoms. Right. So he, he was he just wasn't well enough informed about testosterone himself and thyroid. Mm -hmm. So that's what you find. A lot of people who just don't get it, and they're doctors too. Yeah. They also have choose and are trained to give the very lowest dose possible. Now, the only other thing I know that medicine says about that, I mean, they give highest dose possible on many things and middle dose, but they, but for women's diseases, like for estrogen problems, they give the lowest dose possible. So it doesn't matter if your symptoms are gone. It just matters whether you're close to the lowest end of the uh, normal scale. And that normal scale keeps dropping. I'm not sure why. So, so many people are walking around out there 
was low thyroid. And I want you to know what symptoms can be related to low thyroid. And if you have them, so there's a minimum, get help. There's a, a symptomology problem and a suffering problem that's related to a dose that's too low. Right. And that means you are cold all the time and you have no energy and you gain weight. And God forbid we don't need any more reasons to gain weight. And we're swollen and our blood pressure so, is So what, low. If, what if you take too much? What if you overdose for thyroid? Right. So that's a thing that... That's another thing there's a misconception on. They, the doctors say if your TSH is suppressed or is low, then you must have too much, which is not true. Just like with estrogen, if we have enough when our FSH is suppressed by the estrogen, we have enough thyroid when our TSH is suppressed. What that means is we're replacing the hormone that the TSH and the FSH are stimulating from the pituitary. If we give you enough, your, F, your TSH goes down because it doesn't need to stimulate your thyroid anymore. Okay. That's how I know you have enough. Yeah. And I also look at the individual hormones that the thyroid makes, T3 and T4. Mm -hmm. So I have three points of information plus symptoms, so that's four, to figure out if somebody has low thyroid or not. So is that, that, no, is that, that what you asked? Yeah, because that was a question I had. Why would a doctor focus on giving the minimum dose not get symptom relief okay, if so, it wasn't because he was concerned about giving too much. So too much would be you would get tachycardia, a fast heart rate, and um, sweating, and too much energy, and maybe even weight loss. So okay. like severe weight loss, okay. even when you're eating. So we find that the tachycardia often has to do with low magnesium, and most of us are low on magnesium. So when we start uh, thyroid, we give magnesium right. too. Right. And many times we've had low thyroid because our iodine is low. So we also replace the iodine. That doesn't, you don't need the iodine to make the thyroid anymore if we're giving it to you in a, in a pill. But you do need it for the cells to actually pick up the thyroid and actually absorb it and use it. And what it does, what thyroid does is <clears throat> it actually stimulates your metabolism in each little cell and it makes it makes you take blood sugar and make energy. So, I mean, that's the basis of life. So it's just you another need to have layer that. of sophistication involving chemistry that the doctor may not be current on or right. know about, mm -hmm. which you specialize in, so you do know about it. Right. Okay. And I've had and the disease. And you know how to deal with it. Yeah. And I've had the disease since I was in my 20s, and I've, I, my initial doctor gave me enough thyroid. Okay. And she was very way ahead of her time. She was a DO in Kansas City, and she was amazing, and she made me better. I came back from college, and I was fat, swollen, tired, low blood pressure. I mean, I was my hair all fell out. It was yeah. awful. And then when she gave me my thyroid back in the form of armor thyroid, which is natural thyroid, then everything reversed. And within three months, I was really good. Yeah. So that, that made... A big difference for me and it confirmed what I wanted to do for people when I was a doctor right so you put together a set of guidelines which mm -hmm. is the basis for this conversation and all of the doctors and nurses at Bio Balance Health use this set of guidelines mm -hmm. and that you identify five categories of things that doctors or nurses should know mm -hmm. in order to make an accurate diagnosis right determination. They, the things they should ask you and find out and uh -huh. then decide so the first thing is a list of the symptoms of hypothyroidism, which we'll get back to in a minute. Mm -hmm. But there's uh, 12 or 13 of those symptoms mm -hmm. that you've identified. And if you have three or more, three you're or likely more. to have low thyroid. Okay. So, and that's the beginning step of the diagnosis. I mean, you still get a blood mm -hmm. test to confirm what your uh, symptomatic observation is. And, and it's very important for you to know what you're going to your doctor for. Yeah. Because if you're going to your doctor and you're just walking in, they can't ask you questions about something you haven't told them about. Yeah. And if you already know what you think you have, don't lord it over them, but, but say, you know, I think I might have this because I have these symptoms. Right. Now, if they immediately say, nah, that's ridiculous, then you need an another doctor. Because, honestly, that doctor doesn't deserve to have you as a patient. So but, we'll talk about the symptoms in a right. minute. And then the, the second thing is the presence of a thyroid goiter. And what is that? So a goiter, your thyroid is right here. It looks like a little butterfly. It kind of goes like this. And a little, they call it the isthmus. It's like the area in between the, the two wings of the, mm -hmm. of the thyroid. So if you have a big lump at the bottom of your neck, kind of sitting here, uh -huh. and it could be on one side, it could be on both sides, I've that's a goiter. I've seen something like as big as a softball almost, just really 
Yeah, I mean, it, in the old days when yeah. we had... Oh, when I was a kid. Yeah, when, seen yeah in, in places where there was, or places there are, is poor um, nutrition and no iodine. And I mean, and, and in the Midwest, they call it the goiter belt. But in the okay. old days, you would see these big masses. I mean... So those get surgically removed? No, I mean, no. they have to be... Well, in general, if they're benign, they have to be checked to make sure there's no cancer in there or anything else. Right. But once they're deemed benign, then you just take thyroid to suppress that stimulation from your brain okay. to shut it down. Okay. And so it slowly goes away. And, I mean, it's a simple treatment, but right. rarely do doc doctors often say, oh, well, that'll just go away. I mean, it doesn't just go away. Mm -hmm. But I also give iodine because that makes the thyroid work better. And calm down too. Okay, and and so then, the the third category, uh, one to six of the four to six blood tests drawn are abnormal. So you give four to six, or all doctors do give four to six. So I initially do a screening test where I do TSH, free T3. That means the part of the your thyroid thyroid three. It has three iodines on it. So thyroid three is that part that's working. If that's low. If the free TS, we do a free TS, T4, excuse me, and that's the other thyroid, we're looking for that to be low. And reverse T3 is a, <clears throat> is a high, is a high thyroid. Uh, basically, it means if it's high, your thyroid's low. Sorry, I didn't explain that much. But if you have low thyroid, the next time you come back, and I may already be treating you, I want to know if your thyroid disease is autoimmune. Did it, did it, get stimulated because you have an autoimmune disease, you're attacking your own thyroid. Right. Did that cause it to How be do you low? Know that? Well we, we look for antibodies that are specific to the thyroid. In the blood test. In the blood test. Okay. So I ordered the next two. So the the uh, one of them is the thyroglobulin antibody and the other one's thyroid peroxidase antibody. So I look at those. Okay. If those are negative then I'm not sure how you got your low thyroid, but it could be genetic. It could be it could be because you didn't have enough iodine. It could be because you had trauma, like um, my daughter fell or was thrown by a horse and carried and, and dragged around the arena by the reins. And it basically, after that, it just killed her thyroid. Huh. It never came back. So that kind of injury can cause. Yeah, it can. Okay. It was sad, and, and but she has a fam We have a family history of it, all the way through back to my through my mother's line. So you don't know if it's genetics or the trauma. It's probably both combination all right and then the fourth thing is a basal body temperature of less than 98 degrees uh, and low blood pressure and pulse so we know that low blood pressure and pulse that's easy you go into the doctor your pu your pulse is 45 or 50 and your blood pressure is low as well your doctor goes oh you're so healthy well you may not be so healthy and you may if you're not an athlete then your blood pressure and your pulse won't both be low. Uh, so it is a sign that you might have low thyroid. So when I, that's, those are the things that you're testing in the doctor's office. But if the basal body temperature is what we used before the tests were easy to do. In other words, the blood tests were expensive and hard to do and you had to wait weeks for right. it way back when I was in medical school. So we would just have a temperature done and then we did workups in the hospital. Okay. So, <laughs> Looking at this list of symptoms that we're going to start talking about now. Yeah, so I, I checked the temperature, and if, if the patient was had a temperature below 98 before they got out of bed, yeah. then that was another sign that you didn't have enough thyroid. Either the dose wasn't right or you just had a low thyroid. Okay. So let's talk about the 13 symptoms of hypothyroidism. Mm -hmm. You've already mentioned several, mm -hmm. so we go through this and, and discuss in more depth the ones we haven't already talked okay. about. Okay. So you talk about fatigue, which can be a common symptom across a scale of things. Mm -hmm. So you have to d d eliminate for, you know, uh, check, rule out this, rule out mm -hmm. that, but you're still trying to hone right. in. Right, there's a lot of reasons to be fatigued. Yeah. But when I look at all my lab, I can tell if you have other reasons. If you don't, if you're not anemic, if you don't have these other reasons, if your nutrition is good um, and you don't have low testosterone and you aren't in menopause, many of those things mean that um, you probably have low thyroid. Okay. Weight gain. Weight gain can be from anything, bad eating. But if you have weight gain and you've always eaten the same way and you've always exercised the same way, and it's 
waken with swelling, like your hands are swollen, you can't put your rings on, your, your legs are swollen. Like if you put, if you go like this and you have a big dent big in your spot, leg, yeah. then the white spot's okay, but that's just diverting the blood flow. But if you go like that and you've got a dent in your leg, that's swelling. And generally low thyroid means swelling all over your body. So okay. legs, hands, not just your legs, not just your hands. All right. Uh, hair loss all over the head. So mm -hmm. other like specifically localized hair losses are usually indicative of different things. Yes. But if you're losing it from all over your head, like you get out of the shower and you see a big pile of hair there. All over, from yeah. all over. Or you notice that when you brush you brush your hair, you can start seeing your scalp uh -huh. in cert all Fitting over your out. head, not yeah. just in one place. Like loss, loss here is um, low estrogen. Loss here and here is too much DHT from your testosterone. Um, loss all over the head, there's another thing that can cause that is, is high cortisol. So if you've been given steroids, then oftentimes you shed. Mm -hmm. And so that, it's one of those two things. So we, we look at where the hair loss is. Feeling cold all the time. I hear that a lot. You heard that from my wife. Uh-huh, but you don't hear that now. No. No, because she's on thyroid. So part of it is... If you're not burning your sugar, making your sugar become energy, then you're not making heat. If you're not making heat, you feel cold, but also that's a sign that none of the, uh, of the uh, enzyme reactions in your body, I mean most of them, some of them work, but most of them are not working or they're slowed down because your body's not warm enough to make them work. Okay. Uh, very dry and itchy skin. I sat next to a gal, a gal in a meeting that I didn't know very well. And she had literally, she, it looked like she had... Um, psoriasis? No, I mean, all over her body. It wasn't in, psoriasis is a patch, it's red. Right. They, they looked like tiles, like irregular roundish tiles all over her skin. It was, it was the worst case of low thyroid I've right. ever seen, but she wouldn't listen, and she had a goiter, and she wouldn't listen to me. Yeah. So if you're out there, you need to see somebody about your thyroid. Constipation, and again, that's one that that's have a common. lot of causes. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it is it is common, but you can't believe how many times I start thyroid, uh -huh. and they're no longer constipated. Yeah, I mean, I had constipation before I was thyroid. I had thyroid, and that was early. That was when I was young, but I don't have it. Right, it's not my right. issue. Trouble thinking. Yeah, that can be low testosterone as well, but tr but you feel muddled. You feel like you just and you can't get through the day, and you can't concentrate. Obviously, that could be ADD, but if you're somebody who doesn't move around a lot or mm -hmm. shake your legs like I do, it's probably not ADHD. Yeah. So, uh, but we have to rule out the other things. But if you have that as one of the three symptoms, then and it this, contributes. This next one intrigues me. Uh, infertility, poor ovulation, and irregular periods. That's tied to the thyroid yeah. operation? Mm -hmm. So the thyroid controls your ovaries if you're female, not your ovaries. Right. Ovaries. If <laughs> So it, your thyroid... Your body senses that you're healthy or not, and healthy enough to have a baby, right? So your body's this amazing machine that actually has feedback, and, and, and it will slow down and stop certain things that make you fertile if you don't have enough thyroid, because thyroid's necessary to be pregnant. And if you have a baby and you have low thyroid, you have a chance of that baby being mentally retarded. Mm. I mean, low thyroid and not replaced. Yeah. Not just low just thyroid. Low if you're replaced, you're normal. So, so the risk of other negative things goes right. up. Right. So your body does that to protect you from having baby. And the irregular periods are part of not ovulating. Okay. Difficulty thinking and poor or concentrating and poor memory. I should have put that with trouble thinking. I'm sorry. I probably added that. But poor memory. The memory is same as testosterone. Low, basically short-term memory. You can't remember names, places, things. So we don't know which it is. We blood test for both mm -hmm. testosterone mm -hmm. and thyroid. And mm -hmm. we then we know. Mm -hmm. And then if it's both, it's both. Yeah. Okay. Uh, swelling all over the body. Well, we were is talking that like about that. That swelling is like your whole body looks like the Michelin man. There's a thing okay. when uh, my mom had been on thyroid and they took her off when she went into the hospital. And when I walked in, she had gained like 10 pounds of water. Yeah. So she looked like her face was moon faced and swollen. She was a really tiny little skinny thing. And she she just she was all swollen. Her rings had to be cut off. Her, you know, her wow. feet didn't fit in her shoes. Well, you know, nobody said anything. I'm like, she needs her thyroid. This is myxedema, the right. worst kind of low thyroid. You have no thyroid. Right. So your body just shuts down and swells up, 
and it's it really is a terrible thing. And you can, I mean, there are people who had their life at risk. So the people at the nursing home didn't recognize what they were dealing with. Oh, it was a hospital. 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 Her doctor didn't. Yeah. Wow. Because they didn't, you know, they weren't asking the questions, and since she was old, they thought she couldn't think, but she could think. She could have answered the questions. Right. Okay. Muscle pain after exercise. That's because muscle pain after exercise is because you can't clear your LDA, uh, excuse me, your lactic acid, and you can't get it out of your muscles, but also because you don't get enough oxygen to the muscles because the blood's not diverted there. Also, your muscles then can't absorb the sugar and make it into energy. Uh -huh. So there's no energy for your muscles to really work. So when people say, uh, I ache after exercise, that's another one that could be testosterone, another one that could be thyroid. So in tandem with that poor muscle strength and poor stamina that's once again if you don't have enough thyroid you aren't making energy out of out of your blood Anything. sugar okay so the muscles are where we burn our most of our calories so that means you can't you can't burn your calories so you're storing it as fat and you can't make energy you so your muscles as energy your source. muscles are yeah. screaming when you're trying to exercise yeah okay so. And then finally, poor immunity. You catch everything, you get everything, mm -hmm. your body can't fight off things. Yeah, that that's just part of not having enough yeah. blood sugar actually turning into energy and, and feeding your immune system. So your body just shuts down what it can, and that's one of the things that shuts down is your immunity. Right. That's not good in the times of, high, of uh, pandemics. So, so it reminds you, this whole conversation reminds me of an old commercial that I used to see for Shell gasoline, mm -hmm. and they, they have two examples, Shell without Platformate and Shell with Platformate, mm -hmm. and they drive a car, and one would go you know, a quarter mile, the other would go several miles mm -hmm. on, a, on a gallon. And so this is what it sounded like to me, that the Platformate was the active octane ingredient mm -hmm. in the gasoline that makes it burn. Mm -hmm. So it's similar with thyroid. If you don't have thyroid, mm -hmm. you're not burning the octane that you need to make your body function. Exactly, and, and it's basically the mitochondria inside each cell, it could be a muscle cell, a brain cell, anyway. Right. The mitochondria are, are the, the areas where oxygen and blood sugar make energy. And so your mitochondria are starving. We now know that mitochondria starving make you sick in other ways. And it also can cause you to age quickly. Okay, so you say if you have three or more of these 13 symptoms, you should discuss with your doctor whether or not it could be a thyroid problem. Right. We've also talked about that, that many of the overlapping symptoms could be thyroid or testosterone. Mm -hmm. So if you give me testosterone and I go off of it uh, for whatever reason, whenever, these symptoms will come back if they're caused by testosterone. If they're caused by no testosterone. And same thing with thyroid. Same thing with thyroid. So if, if these are the symptoms of low thyroid. So if you go off of your thyroid, you'll get all the symptoms back Okay. that you had before. All right. So... Hopefully, this will give you information to talk to your doctor with so that you can look at it and not self-diagnose per se, but you can at least evaluate what you think is going on with you. Compare this list to the list in our books with uh, testosterone deficiency and what those symptoms may be. Discuss it with your physician. Is this something I should be concerned about? Should we take some blood tests? Is it possible I need a thyroid mess? So please uh, come back next week and listen when, when we continue our discussion about hypothyroidism. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.